Welcome to What a Word is Worth, a space for creative minds to speak about viable ways to heal the world through writing and other inventive mediums. This is your host, Marianela Medrano, and I am the founder of Palabra Training Center, where words are giving us medicine. And today I have a guest, um, Jorge Steves, someone I owe a lot to. Um, he guided me when I was um, pursuing studies on the divine feminine in the Taino tradition. And um, he was so generous with his time and his knowledge that um, I have never forgotten that and has considered him to be a friend. So Jorge retired after several decades at the Smithsonian National Museum of the American Indian and has a lot of experience in, um, I, I will say, in cultural preservation. So we'll talk about that. Welcome, Jorge. Thank you so much, Marinera, for having me. It's always an honor and a pleasure to, to, um, to speak with you. So yeah. thank you so much for having me. Yeah, you are a protector of our Taino history. Um, how did you get involved with the American Indian Museum in the first place? Do you wanna talk to us about that? What drove you to doing that kind of work? And I know that you did, you were instrumental of um, organizing the first Taino exhibit there in 2018, or was it before that? Oh, uh, yes and no. There was actually mm -hmm. uh, another exhibit before that one, but that main exhibit that came out um, in 2018, um, yeah, I, I, I've been, if it's Taino, I've been around it one way or another. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So to answer your question, um, the museum for me was like coming full circle, you know, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. because um, as a young boy, <clears throat> uh, when I was going through these issues of identity um, and I had uh, teachers, you know, some teachers would ask me if, if I was Indio, um, my response, you know, yes, but I'm from the Dominican, I'm from the Dominican Republic, the Caribbean. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. uh, and then that was met with speculation, you know, mm -hmm. uh, and uh, I even had one teacher one day bring me a, a, an encyclopedia to show me that there were no Indians in the Caribbean, you know. So hearing these stories about Indio relatives at home and and um, and uh, cassave and all this indigeneity and then mm -hmm. having these teachers, you know, explain to me uh, that this was all wrong, uh, you know, I was always like, uh, in, a, in a state of, um, of, of the, it was a defensive posture, you know? Of course. Like, you know, so that was my experience. So uh, when I was about 11, 12 years old, I went to, um, we went on a school trip to the, to the Museum of the American Indian. This was before the Smithsonian had, had uh, mm -hmm. taken it over. Mm -hmm. And uh, I was sure that I was gonna find something on my country, uh, there, you know, mm. I, I just had this corazonada, and sure enough, as soon as we walked in, there was this a uh, this sign above this uh, this exhibit case that said West. Uh, it said the Taínos, West Indies, mm -hmm. and uh, and I ran to it, you know, and I, I saw these objects. I had never seen these objects before. I didn't know what they were, but I just kept seeing the Dominican Republic, Puerto Rico, Cuba, Haiti. Jamaica and all uh, the objects, you know, and I was just in my zone. Mm -hmm. And there was one little sign while I was showing off to my friend. You see, I told you there were Indians in my country and that this mm. and all this stuff. Uh, the best way I could defend myself as a child. Um, and then there was this little sign, a little plaque that had like, like the eulogy of what happened to the Taino, you know. So like by 1565, sadly, yeah. all the Tainos were gone. You know, mm -hmm. and I remember looking at that sign and just wanting to kick it off the wall. You know, like I just like mm -hmm. I just got filled with like this rage, mm -hmm. and um, but I fell in love with the objects. There was something about the objects that that really called me. Mm -hmm. So on Sundays, we was always like, uh, especially during the summers, 
And Sundays were always my, my, my boring days because my friends would go to church and I would sit on the stoop, you know, we used to call it the stoop right, back in the day, right? But I would sit on the stoop looking up the block and down the block, nobody inside to play with. I knew that they were all in church and then after church, they would go on these like picnics and things like this. So after I found the museum, I found myself sneaking on the train, mm -hmm. going down to 155th Street in Manhattan. That's when the, where the museum was located at the time. And, um, and I, I, at the time, I didn't know that I was actually sneaking into the museum as well, but they would just let me in. And I would just walk in and I would sit in front of the objects and just stare at them. And mm -hmm. a few times I was even walking up, you know, I was like, hey, you gotta go, mm -hmm. you know, because mm -hmm. I, I was there. Um, but naturally, you know, in time, I grew out of that. Um, never thought about the museum again, only to then um, uh, land a job there, which was truly magical the way it happened. You know, mm. I, I had been working someplace else uh, in a very hard job. I was working in Hunts Point Terminal Market as a machine operator um and filling up trucks with produce you know and and that was hard work i worked from nine o'clock at night to nine in the morning um in worse conditions than the mailman you know because i was yeah. literally outside in, you know in the winter summer rain snow whatever for all that that time and um but i wasn't a union member and i had been warned that if i ever uh, asked to be put in the union that i would i would be let go of right away and then uh, sure enough, one day, uh, it was, Chris, it was two, a few days before Christmas, and I was the only one working. Everybody had taken, all the union workers had taken their, their time. Mm -hmm. And uh, I was complaining about the over, so much work that I had. And uh, the manager told me, well, you know, why didn't you take, you know, your time off like all the other people? And I said, well, I'm not in the union. And this guy actually said, I'm going to help you. And he calls the shop steward and told him, hey, we got to get George in the union. And then the guy goes, hey, sure, no problem. Tomorrow when you come in, your papers will be there. And I was so happy because I started thinking, oh, my God, benefits, time off, vacation. <laughs> my, my, you know, I was, I was making good money already. And, and now I, I was just so happy. So I, I spent the whole night skipping back and forth to, to truck to truck. And the next night, just like I was told, like, like I was warned, I remember I was lifting up a skid of apples and, and, um, and uh, this guy who always hated me, he was a racist. And he says, and he always used to call me, uh, we got into it one time because he called me boy, you know, and I had to mm -hmm. remind him that I was no boy, that I'm a grown man. Mm -hmm. and, um, and that day he says, Georgie, <laughs> he called me Georgie. And I went, oh my God, I'm so fired. I mean, right away, you know, mm, to put mm. it together. So I came off my, my machine, took my hat off and I said, yeah, what is it? And he says, um, oh, you know, you know, it's Christmas time. We got to let you go. And I said, I stopped the nonsense. Just give me my check. El cabron had that check in his pocket right there. He just handed mm. it to me like, you know, mm. oh. And I left. And then I remember that, uh, you know, um, due to situations in my life at the time, I was stuck. I was like, what am I going to do now? You know, like this right. was like two days before Christmas. And I remember going on that bus, it was raining and snow and it was cold and, and, and I was choked up. I'm like, what am I going to do? But if that had not happened to me, you know, porque, yeah, that was, verdad, no hay mal que por bien no venga. yeah, of course it was the kick that you needed. Yeah. And, um, I, uh, I was already volunteering at the museum, you know, on Saturdays. Uh, and uh, when I went in about a week later of that, you know, because it was a Christmas thing. So a week. Um, uh, so when I, I went back to the museum, uh, this lady comes in. Uh, her name is uh, Michelle. She's the one who hired me eventually. And she said, hey, George, I hear that you're not working and we, ne we need somebody to help us work for two weeks. Uh, we have a group of Mississippi Choctaw people that are coming in and mm -hmm. we need someone to help guide them, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And she said, do you want to work? And I said, yeah, sure. You know, and um, I was surprised at how much money they were paying me just to, to do that. You know, mm -hmm. I mean, I, I came from a job where I was hauling potatoes. Sex right, potatoes, right. Like mm -hmm. that. And, uh, and then, um, and then, you know, she, uh, and then she says, uh, after I finished those two weeks, I go to hand in my invoice and she goes, so would you like to work for another two weeks? 
And I remember you're looking at that I responded to her, does a dead man want to wait? You know, I'm here I am I'm without an right. employment and you're telling me if I want to work. Muerto it, quiere misa. Exactly, right? So uh, you want to work in an Indian museum doing mm -hmm. what you love to do, you know, it's like mm -hmm. it was like a dream come true. But I never had any any illusions of staying there, you know, because mm -hmm. for one thing, you know, I'm not a citizen. I'm actually working on my citizenship now. I've even mm -hmm. though I've been in my, this country my entire life. Um, How was, old were you, Jorge, when you came? Five. You five were five. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I, um, so I had a, a few factors that that I I believed would keep me from working at the mm -hmm. museum. So I was just happy to be doing that, you know. So that two week contract turned into a month contract. That month contract turned into a six month contract. They said, let's just give you a six month contract. That we, mm -hmm. oh my god. So and then. You know, that's when I started looking at the possibilities. I was like, you know, now I have access to, to the objects, to the Taino objects. And I saw objects that I hadn't seen since I was a child. Mm -hmm. You know, when I would sit in front of them, like, like Deminan Caracaracol, mm -hmm. one of my mm -hmm. favorite Taino objects. Of course. Uh, I was able to hold them, touch them, take a picture with him. And I remember mm -hmm. I would see him behind the case uh, when, I was, when I was 11 years old. And then it hit me. I'm like, wow, I went all, I mean, this whole entire mm -hmm. lifetime ups and downs and trials and tribulations and I ended up there again in front of these mm -hmm. objects you know as you but, were supposed to yeah so so then your um connection to the Taino culture began when you went to the museum or was it was it part of your um consciousness already yeah my 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 indigenous consciousness if you will Mm -hmm. began when I was five, four, four or five years old. Mm -hmm. And, uh, and um, that's a, another story. Um, but basically, I, I was I was in the Dominican Republic. And um, I, I, I wasn't going to school, but my stepsister, she, uh, she would uh, go to school. And I remember sitting next to her mm -hmm. while she was in school, you know, and then after school, we would all go to this lady's house and she was the only one that had a television set. And we would watch two shows. It was um, uh, Rin Tin Tin, mm. Rin Tin Tin, right? Mm. Which is about a, 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 um, about a cavalry, you know, a fort and a dog, German shepherd dog, like Lassie type of thing. Mm. And this little boy. Um, and then the other show was Los Pica Piedra, which was the Flintstones, mm. you know? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And... Um, then on one and one day you know and i can't really tell you the sequence because it, you know my, my, my i'm old now but i remember one day that i uh i got to the house late you know and they, the kids were already sitting down watching rin tin tin mm -hmm. and all of a sudden there's this guy who's knocking on the fourth door to get in and this guy has long hair He's mm. dressed funny. He has feathers in his hair and everything. Something about that image um, made me cry, you mm. know? And, mm. and, and then the lady came to me, the lady, the owner of the house, she came to me, she asked me, what was the matter? And I asked her, I said, why, why is he dressed like that? You know, like, mm. like you know, because he looks so different from everybody else, you know? And she said to me, um, oh, no le tenga miedo. Eso es un indio. You know, and I told her, I said, it's not a, it's not that I'm afraid. It's that it hurts me when I see it. It hurts me. Mm -hmm. That's that. That in, as, as a child, that's all I can remember mm -hmm. that I could explain to her. And um, and then, sometime after that, my grandmother came to pick me up, because um, by that time um, my mother was already here. Because I was living with my father actually, and my mother was already here. And my grandmother came to, to pick me up, to take me to, um, to get my vacunas. Mm -hmm. So then I can travel to the United States. Um, and it, and it didn't work because I was so um, malnutrition that, um, cause the people that I was staying with, you know, were, were, um, were mistreating me. Um, but, um, but my, when my, I remember that, uh, my, my stepmom, cause what happened was that, you know, how the way Dominican men, you know, my father was a military man, so he actually mm. had three wives, mm. <laughs> you know. So um, when my mother came here, he just moved in with the other one. Mm. 
and took me along with him, you know? So I was with this lady who didn't like me because, you know, I'm somebody else's child, you know, and mm-hmm. she had sisters mm-hmm. and brothers and, and, and my other brothers. So you my- went through, through a lot and the culture was not part of your day to day, the Taino culture. Right. Yeah. But you had this, this connection to it. Well, what happened was that when my grandmother came to pick me up at, at, at the house, I was outside playing marbles, Bayuga. Mm-hmm. And I remember when she turned the corner, I was looking down. Mm-hmm. And I remember when she turned and I saw her, my grandmother had really long hair. Mm-hmm. And that same imagery, you know, like what I saw with the guy, yes. I saw her. Right. And when she came up to me, the, I, uh, she says, um, she, she asked me, do you know who I am? You know? And I said, and I asked her, are you, usted una India? Mm. And she said, yeah, yo soy India, mm. you know, because my grandmother always identified as India. Mm-hmm. Um, and, uh, and, and I said, but do you and know who I am? And this, this was in Haibon or uh, where were you? This was in the capital, by this time in I was this, in, in, in Santo capital, Domingo, yeah. okay. In Santo Domingo. So then mm-hmm. uh, when she said, she said to me, um, also, este, do you know who I am? And, and she said, I'm your grandmother. And my response to that was, ah, pues yo soy un indio también. And mm-hmm. that was the beginning of my entire life. Mm-hmm. Because, mm-hmm. And, and, it's, and, and you know, it's also like a series of events where, you know, things just came into place, right? Because my mother, by this time, and I don't know how much time had passed between all her and the drama with my father, but um, my mother had met somebody else and she was living with, um, with this Mexican man, right? And um, his best friend, uh, whose, whose name was Frankie Ray, mm. was a Navajo um, Indian who, uh, he was Navajo Mexican. Mm-hmm. And uh, he, he, he was a singer. And, uh, and one of my earliest memories of, of that time was my grandmother fighting with him over how he is, was not a real Indian and she was, mm. because he was not from our country. De donde vienen los indios, you know, as far as her, her knowledge was. Yeah, you know, her you know, understanding. You know. mm-hmm. Yeah, and, and, and I remember that he asked her, he goes like, well, who do you think lived in this country before the white people came? And she says, los negros, pero mm-hmm. los indios son de mi país. That, that was mm-hmm. my, my grandmother's way of seeing things, you know. Mm-hmm. Um, but, um, but so, so she I, was, she was a great influence for yeah, you. Yeah, her mm-hmm. and, 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 my, and my mother as well. So after that, the indigeneity started creeping Mm. in and it was by these little things that you did day to day right so Mm. for example um when uh in those days when we first got here um we make cassava at home Mm -hmm. and basically you know um on the weekends the family were together you know and aguayal yuca you know and quemal cassava this and that and uh during these times whenever the family got together actually you would hear stories, but it wasn't like um, sit down, some more right, right, right. It's nothing of like course that, not. that romantic or that, or that mm-hmm. you know. But it's like you're hearing things like, um, mm-hmm. ah, Pedrito Chavez, ese es un indio fuerte, de verdad, por él, porque mm-hmm. llevaba esa sangre, you know, mm-hmm. este, esa sangre valiente, you know, and this isn't that, and él se le, se le paró a Trujillo, and, mm-hmm. and all these, these, these things like that. And then there was Tigo Choro, un primo de mi, de mi abuela, que él, él era este, un gualipote, and he, mm-hmm. can, he was a shapeshifter. Mm-hmm. And, and there's a whole story about how he would, uh, you know, about how he was uh, running from the police um, uh, because he had, uh, he had killed a guy who was rich or he, he had chopped off the guy's ear. And mm-hmm. the guy was, came from, a, from an affluent family and, um, and the police were looking for him and, uh, and he, would, he would change into uh, mm-hmm. a, a, a lizard or una right, rama, right. You know, that he had this right. power. And then his mother was also very powerful because she could see so all these things. And there was always this thing about Los Indios. So to me, and it wasn't like that there wasn't anything um, that the African or, or that the Spanish was absent, you know? It's mm-hmm. just that it was just as real. The Indio was just as real as anything else. Right, you know? it was as integrated as. So, yeah. so you have coined the, the, the term paper genocide. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, I, guess. Uh, <laughs> I guess I know I used it a lot. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so, when did you begin? Is it 
through working in the museum that you realize, well, yes, the information is here, but I also know that this, the myth of extinction is real. And so tell me more how. Well, well as, I was, as I was growing up, mm -hmm. um, you know, like a lot of my friends, few of my friends um, were always, uh, you know, cracking jokes, you know, like yeah. my, my best friend, Louis Guest passed away. He used to always make jokes. He, he was just as African as I am Indio because mm -hmm. he, uh, he was very proud of his African heritage. And he used to make jokes about me being an Indian that couldn't shoot an arrow straight. And this mm -hmm. was always a thing. Um, but there came a point when I was about 15, 16 years old that I really got, um, I turned my back on the whole thing because it, it, I, you know, just like now that if you say, uh, oh, I'm Afro-Dominican, that no one bats an eye, you know? Mm -hmm. um, but if you say that you're Taino, um, una locura, you know? Mm -hmm. you know? And, and, and I got tired of that, you know? So I, I always would lead with that the way I do now. This is what I am. This is how I mm -hmm. identify. It's my right to identify how I want to. But mm -hmm. no, it was always like met with this resistance. And um, so I turned my back on it for a while. And this was like the 70s, Afros were the thing, mm -hmm. you know? And um, I, and my friend Lewis being, you know, black and, and, you know, when I would hang out with, with, with uh, him and, 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 uh, and, and the boys, uh, you know, everybody had the big Afro. So I outgrew everybody. Mm -hmm. I, I, I grew the biggest Afro you can possibly grow, you know? Um, and uh, the only thing that I kept to remind me of myself was that we used to always put a, a, a power sign afro mm. pick that were very common mm. in those days mm -hmm. but mm -hmm. I, I i would always buy a red one mm. red for indian you know and i would put it in my hair that was always my thing this way because i knew who i was but mm -hmm. this is what i what, what, what you know how i how i identified but now i'm i'm in the black zone you know i'm i'm trying to you know fit in with my black friends you know and um and the day that that died was um I can remember that as clear as day. And what happened was that we were having a game of basketball and it was raining. We were just kids playing. And um, I, there I was with my big old Afro, you know, always patting it, you know, because you had to keep it nice and tight. And, um, and what happened was that for some reason or another, I was making every shot, which for me, like I can box, I could do gymnastics. These are the things that mm -hmm. I did, you know, but I could never, never play like I couldn't play baseball, I couldn't play basketball. You would not think that I'm Dominican by the fact that I cannot play baseball, right? But um, I uh, was playing, and that day I was making every single shot, and I was talking what we used to call jive at the time. You know, I'm like, you know, yeah, man, you know, like we we can beat you and you know, all this stuff. And one of the guys got really angry, and uh, on the other team, and started making fun of me, thinking that I was black. You know. Mm -hmm. And, uh, and then, you know, he basically said, uh, look at you, man, you know, like um, using the N word, but look at you, you know, like uh, you, you, you want to be black so bad you can taste it. You know, he goes, where's your fro? Where's your fro? You know, now my hair was wavy, like right, yours, you right. know, it was coming down past my shoulders, you know, and like mm. looking the way I do, you know, I, um, you know, he told me like, you look like a freaking Indian. You don't look, you don't, you ain't black, you know? And then I found myself, like being rejected by people that I, I never, I never um, uh, like they rejected my Africanness either, you know, like I, it, it, there was nothing, I, 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 mean, never, you, I, I never saw myself pieces of, uh, you know, like right. 50, that to me is like, these are all the things I am and they're a hundred percent, you know, mm -hmm. each, you know, um, and he was laughing. The guys on the other team were laughing. But to my surprise, the guys on my team that were all black were also laughing at me. So it was like the butt mm -hmm. of everybody's joke. Mm -hmm. And like, it was like having a ringing in my ear and I walked away, you know? Um, I wasn't even thinking about them. I was just thinking about myself. I'm like, but this is not who I am. Not, not, mm -hmm. And then I, I, I understood it. And I knew that it was more than- Meaning that, that, you didn't, that you didn't see yourself as a fragmented person, but you, you do you subscribe to the idea that you are Afro Taino? No, not really, because I couldn't understand um, 
like culturally, you know, mm -hmm. like what, what, what is, what is African, you know, mm -hmm. like, mm -hmm. like I think, uh, um, the things that were indigenous were very clearly indigenous to me, you know, like mm. uh, we were talking in school, you know, about like the pilgrims and corn, well, corn is indigenous, so we were had corn like that, but I couldn't, mm. it wasn't like we were like, well, we're using this thing at home, that, and this is from Africa, so I'm gonna like, gravitate to that. The only mm. reason why I know that I'm Spanish, you know, that I, you know, what we used to call being Spanish is because I, mm. I spoke the language. Mm. Other than that, you know, and since I was focused on the, the Indian, I can see those things, and I was always looking for these things, but um, I, and I remember when I was going through my Afro phase, asking my mother, like, like, you know, we have Haitian family, you know, mm -hmm. um, on her father's side. Mm -hmm. And I used to tell her, like, like, what is that? You know, like how, you know, my mother was like, well, you know, like, um, they have different costumbres than we do, you know. And then she, she, she uh, described un baquine that she experienced when she was young. And that's where uh, these Haitians, because my family would actually hit Haitians from the Dominican troops mm. back during the, those, those, mm. those years in the 30s where they were killing mm. Haitians, you know. And my family uh, was instrumental in saving a lot of Haitian families. But she, my mother talked about how uh, one time this Haitian man and his family, El, El Su Carrilla, you know, like the cart, mm. uh, you mm. know, had yeah, flipped yeah. over and, and the guy's daughter had died. Yeah, and then they had a bakini. Yeah, they had, uh, mm -hmm. yeah. And, uh, and, the, and, the, and she, my mother said that La gente, you know, del campo, they, they mm. went to take caracoles mm -hmm. uh, to put around the grave, and those things were not allowed in this place. Mm -hmm. And uh, and then they were appalled that they had the baby, you know, dressed up, and they mm -hmm. were dancing her around, mm -hmm. and and it was like a, a, a joyous celebration, you know. Mm -hmm. and, and my mother said that that was to them that was so weird, you know. Mm -hmm. you know, like on our side, being Christian, I guess, mm -hmm. you know, and with all these campesino traditions, but it was different than them. So the, the point was that my mother didn't see them as, as uh, like bad people or because they're mm -hmm. black or right, like, right. No racist, but there was a difference mm -hmm. the, the way they did things, the way we did things like that. that. Culturally, yeah. um, the, your family was, was closer to the indigenous roots. Mm -hmm. at least at least that's the way, that's the way I perceived it so mm -hmm. I I uh I um when I walked away from 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 the group of guys I I I, I said you know I, I've always been on this you know red path this Indian thing and, and I'm gonna mm -hmm. stay here like that but it was something that I wasn't going to advertise mm -hmm. you know and, and interestingly later on when I started meeting other people who identified as Taino, mm -hmm. they too felt that they, they, they didn't need to advertise it. So some people, you know, they'll do like, well, I'm Afro Taino, I'm like that. And that to me begins cutting things up. Mm -hmm. For me, it's about the evolution of who we are, right? So as a people, an island people, right? The history of our, of our island is one where we had people coming from all over the Americas, you know, from yes, South America, we are, we are... any migrations, mm -hmm. right? And all these different Indians merged to become Taino. Yeah. But that wasn't the end of the Taino story. The right. Taino story was one where we were gonna include also the Spanish and include also the African. So to me, Taino encompasses all that's, that's within me. So it's a matter of like, you wanna call that African and, and, and embrace everything, well, that's fine. You know, if you wanna call that right. Spanish or Dominican, that's fine, but, but people I mean, there there is also the perspective, right, that um, we do have to um, recognize the, the African heritage um, and also the, and I think about, you know, the, the, uh, the story of uh, Sebastian Lemba, um, who was an, an African warrior who united forces with the Tainos to resist. So uh, to me, he symbolizes what is needed, which is a position where we continue the resistance mm -hmm. because we both, um, both Tainos and, and, and to me at a personal level, I can't distinguish, I can't pull. I did, and as I can say that I grew, I grew up with more, of the Taino culture and better in my day to day than the African. Mm -hmm. But as a political posture, we have to come together as a form of resistance. Mm -hmm. 
But I hear what you're saying in terms of the Taino includes all that. Right. Well, that, that's a good point, and 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 uh, and and you know I, I respect that. But but I I I don't see it in that way simply because, you know, and this and this is and this is probably a a, a little um, a little weak. I, I don't know, but mm. you know when when um when you come to this country, right? You mm. uh, you uh, you become an American citizen, mm. and you meet somebody from here, who's an American probably, and then you have uh, children together, little Americans, you know. That's that's the way it is, you know, and then they grow up, they get married, another American, and boom, and this is the way we become Americans, you mm -hmm. know. But in the Caribbean, it's a different story. In the Caribbean, they tell us that people came from outside, they married with our women on our lands, mm -hmm. and we become them, mm. and they extinguish us. That's the paper, right? Thing, right. right. You know? and, and then in order for me not to be ridiculed or 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 so that I can feel comfortable saying that I'm Taino, I have to include everything else. I can't lead with Taino. I have to be Afro Taino, Afro like whatever. I'm Taino, then talk to me about the rest of it. But Africa is not in danger of of of, of, of losing of in, its African identities. <laughs> yes. You know? Yes. And neither is Spain or the Europeans. Right. The Tainos are still extinct. Mm. We're still an extinct people. You mm. know, mm. the Taino is not recognized, even though there's DNA. It is not. It, it's more acceptable now mm -hmm. because they realize that it's not going away. Mm -hmm. But, you know, but this, this idea for me that, well, the Tainos mixed, therefore they're no longer real Tainos, but so did the Africans. Are they real Africans? Right. And All the right. Spanish, you know, like, why is it that the Taino, just like anywhere else in the Americas, the Indian has to always uh, be pure in order mm -hmm. to be, you know, mm -hmm. and everybody else can only be a little part of it, you know? Mm -hmm. So um, it only takes yeah. one drop of black blood to be black, but it takes a whole lot of Indian blood to be Indian. No. I, I see. I yeah. see. So for me, so, it's all about indigenous resistance versus that colonial mindset, you know, like, uh, yeah, I, I just don't subscribe to that. But so, so I know that you've been working, um, as I say, you were so, um, my God, you were such a blessing um, when we met. Um, I forget how many years ago. That was a while but, ago. Yeah. yeah um, we were young and. <laughs> Anyway, you, some of us are still young. You look very young to me, right? You don't look like you've changed at all. No. I am. So I know you you have started a language reconstruction project, and mm -hmm. I remember you telling me um, some thoughts then, and you're giving us with this project and with your beautiful um, dictionary, which I hope we're going to um, go into it now, you started um, giving us an opportunity to reimagine ourselves. Mm. And it's such a, to, to me, it's, it's medicine. That's medicine. Language is medicine. And words are medicine. Taking language away from a people is cruel, right? It's the, the, the most the cruelest of all forms of erasure. Mm -hmm. So I thank you for, for doing this work. And, and, and I, I just want us to go into um, what this process has been like for you. How did the dictionary came to be? And especially because I'm imagining a lot of people are going to the, uh, the extinct issue and that the Tainos were an oral tradition, so there is no writing. So talk to us about the process of creating this dictionary and where you leaned to be able to do the language reconstruction. Okay. Um... Again, thank you for all, all your super kind words. Um, so where do I begin? Um, the Spanish uh, recorded about 3,200 Taino words. 99% mm -hmm. of them are nouns. Mm -hmm. um, so many efforts in trying to construct the Taino language, you know, reconstruct the Taino language, mm -hmm. or revive rather, I like the word revive. Mm -hmm. 
-hmm. we're always met with that you know with that wall mm -hmm. you know um and and uh so this is why you know it was con it's considered an extinct language you know um so i started looking at the taino language over 30 something years ago like everybody else that's on the same path that i'm at right. you know um looking at the words and trying to figure out what they were you know um and um and then <clears throat> my 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 research led me to some uh very interesting conclusions you know first of all um when i think of the caribbean the caribbean was um i look at it like like manhattan right mm -hmm. like the island of manhattan manhattan is 20 miles long by five miles wide um everybody in manhattan is an american right mm -hmm. and the official language is english right but within that small piece of land there are how many languages that are oh, actually spoken, right <laughs> and that's the way we were so mm -hmm. there was no taino language there were taino languages yes plural, right right um so this is one of the reasons why it's so hard to like is this the correct word is that the correct word how come it's pronounced like this why it's pronounced like that now aside from that the spanish also did a very horrible job at recording anything and okay. everything yeah. that is Taino. The first thing was orthography, right? Mm -hmm. So Spanish orthography did not become like standardized until 1650, I think it was something like that. So that means that if, if a person who came with Columbus was from Andalusia mm -hmm. and he heard a word, he's going to record it in one way. But somebody that's Catalan is going to record it in another. Somebody who's from Galicia is going to record it in another. And the same word is, 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 is documented, recorded in three different ways. Mm -hmm. um so then which is the correct way you know how is the right way that's one so the orthography is one of the the, the, the issues the next one is um it has to do with the fact that the taino language is polysynthetic right so um uh with one word you can say a whole entire sentence right right so like you know, a lot is is packed there right. And and sometimes like you know like even like in some of our like our current slang we we use some like, like uh, some words like that like uh, cómo está hermano está todo bien mm -hmm. or qué lo que man mm -hmm. you know mm -hmm. and, and like that yeah so imagine, <laughs> right so the, the Spanish not knowing this they're recording they think they're recording word for word and mm -hmm. and so so even like like words like um yo cajubao right mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. they're supposed to be the creator well nobody mm -hmm. had really figure out what it really means, you know, mm -hmm. because is it saying yukahu, so it's related to yuka, or is it mm -hmm. yokahu, mm -hmm. et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And I saw that as a big problem, you know. Um, I mean, they have no context, right? For They even say that the Tainos had no religions. They had no, absolutely no context. None. They I, were I, coming I, from, you know, the war against the Moors and the, you know, the, the religious war mm -hmm. that they, they were facing. So they came with all their biases. Yeah, misconceptions, biases, yeah. and, uh, and looking at things through, through, one, through one lens mm -hmm. is never a good thing. So, so what we have about the language, I, I look at it and I go, it, it, it was, it's good that they recorded it, but it's, it's a very bad, bad recording. Uh, in particularly, um, like if you see in the book, the one thing that I did not, tackle because we're we're going to bring that we're working on that now is the names of all the different spiritual beings that that we have and the mm -hmm. reason for that is that when i look at them based on what i've what i've learned now i see that all of them are wrong the other day i heard um <clears throat> there was this <clears throat> this young man in the dr and he's uh he's talking about one taino deity and he says oh this means um, Mother Earth, you know, but that is so wrong, and for me, it just grinds that, my ears. That is Kawama. No, Itiva Kaubaba. Oh, Itiva Kaubaba. That, uh -huh. that it means Mother Earth, and that is, it is mm. so wrong because first of all, Itiva, if you don't understand the language, Itiva means abundant blood. Mm. That's an easy one, you know, uh, and and so where is this Mother Earth coming from? I know it's like the concept, you know, they're looking at it conceptually, mm. like so the concept of a Mother Earth and whatever. But it's not 
what the word is really saying, you know, and I have a problem my, myself in trying to understand what, what, what my ancestors were, were, um, were believing in or like looking at the way the, they saw the world with words that are actually not even correct. That's, that's, that's problematic, you know, because what happens is that you, 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 you're, you're, you're using a lot of concepts that come from northern tribes. A lot of times, you know, this is what's happened in, our, in the Taino movement. Uh, a lot of concepts that don't really fit into how the Taino cosmology, you mm -hmm. know. Um, so it's like a, a new culture and we're just calling it Taino. And, you know, lo, lo, los, uh, los ologos. They see, they see that as very inauthentic, you know, it's mm -hmm. like, you know, mm -hmm. proof of extinction, you know, you're making things right. up because, you know, but I, I like to, I like to really get deep. So one of the things that I like about modern, um, modern genetics, you know, mm -hmm. like the way we are now with the genetics is that now we can really trace the, the migration patterns and mm -hmm. one migration pattern that was always like the weakest was the Guyanese, Venezuelan, mm -hmm. you know, uh, Eastern the, Venezuelan connection. The and now we know that that's, yeah. Mm -hmm. And now we know that that's, that, 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 that definitely happened. Mm -hmm. So that, so when you look at a lot of the, their stories um, and a lot of their words, you see, you find the cognates now. To this day, mm -hmm. not a single linguist has ever worked on the Taino language. Mm -hmm. That's a fact. There's a lot of books. Well, except for these. <laughs> yeah, well, I'm not a linguist. I, I never. No, but you did the work. <laughs> oh, I did. I did a work, right? but mm -hmm. thank you. But but no linguist has ever actually worked on the Taino language. All they've done is collect words, and they've mm -hmm. collected words from here, from there, from there. So we don't even know what these words, you know, what what these words are. And and um and uh wow, where I was going with this anyway. So the thing is that that uh. The work has been so shoddy, you know, that mm -hmm. that uh, it's never let, taken us to a place where we can actually work on. So what I did was I, I used a different technique. Um, I, I started talking to some uh, linguists that I know. Mm -hmm. um, uh, I met uh, I was fortunate enough to meet to meet Alexandra Eichenbeld, and she is mm -hmm. probably the top linguist. Mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. She's amazing. Mm -hmm. I, I was just invited to this. Um, to this uh, to this um, event the other day, where a whole bunch of linguists got together and, and wrote a book about her. That, mm. that's, how, that's how amazing mm. this woman is. And I also um, and then she introduced me to Conrad Ripka, which is another 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 uh, um, Lingu. amazing linguist. Mm. I mean, he is badass. And um, I just basically asked them questions like, um, you know, how do you feel about this? How do you think about that? You know, and and uh, uh, reading um, Alexandra Eichenwell's book, um, one of the books that she has is called Languages of the Amazon. Mm -hmm. She had a section in there, um, uh, I think it's in the, the very first, second chapter that is talked talk about nested identity, right? Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. nested identity is this, this, this concept where, you know, you have multiple peoples that speak different languages and they come together and in time, their children, you know, as they as they intermarry, they develop a new language. You know, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. that's the way I understand. It's the evolution. It. I mean, it's the evolution of things, and language is an evolutionary. Exactly. Yeah. So I imagined myself in a nested community, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. right, where we have all these Taino words, but to fill them in, we're going to use words from the closest related languages like mm -hmm. Locono, you mm -hmm. know? Mm -hmm. um, the closest language to Taino is Locono. Um, mm -hmm. And there are more- Which is from the Arawak. The Arawak right, family. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so um, the Taino language is, is a Tamaypurian uh, Arawak language. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, Locono, to me, is like, like, like the Latin of mm -hmm. the Arawak uh, mm -hmm. languages. So Locono, why you, I used some Garifuna, yeah, uh, and not, not too much. Um, and, 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 and part of that is because Garifuna itself is a nested language, you know, it, it's completely, a, yeah. But, but the Garifuna culture is such a reminder of what you're saying, right? Because they have 
I mean, talking about resistance mm -hmm. and and really taking pride in, in fighting for identity, they they have done it. They've been able to to protect language, cultures, everything. When I, when for me, I think that Garifuna is probably after Locono, it's the most beautiful mm -hmm. Iraq language there is. Mm -hmm. And the reason for that is because they, they take not only words and concepts from Arawak and Carib, mm -hmm. which are very mm -hmm. different, mm -hmm. but also from, from, um, from African languages, African. Mm -hmm. Spanish and English, and they make it work in a way mm -hmm. that is uniquely Garifuna mm -hmm. or Garinago, mm -hmm. the way they call it. Mm -hmm. it. It's really a spectacular language. But coming into this to this work, you know, um, there are some people, who, some efforts where they people have adopted the languages of these people, you know, mm -hmm. and they'll say like, I'm gonna take, I'm gonna learn Garifuna, for example, and, and use that. But I I I, I didn't want to appropriate anybody else's work or anybody mm -hmm. else's language, you know, um, because if I change it, then I'm wrong, you know. If I, you know, so what I wanted to do was, and that one of the things that I that I worked on with 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 my advisors was. I just want to do, do something that whether it's right or wrong, good or bad, it's ours. It's uniquely ours, mm -hmm. you know? So, um, so where it diverges, right? I, I use, I use, I pick the words that, that, that best fit together, you know? Um, and then since uh, the, the Arawak language is also, you know, very uh, suffix driven and you can put words together. Like, for example, somebody said to me, like, how can you have a word like refrigerate? We didn't mm -hmm. have a word for that mm -hmm. in the old days. And I'm like, 150 years ago, we didn't have the word refrigerate in English. Mm -hmm. But if you're gonna if you're gonna be in a modern time, you have to have a word for it. So how do we be, how do we get a word for refrigerate? We just didn't pull it out. But we say is, well, what is to refrigerate? To make something cold, mm -hmm. right? So then using that very same concept of of uh, of, of trunca truncating words, you know, like uh, uh, to make cold, and then mm -hmm. you put them together. And then you have the word that we use for refrigerate. Mm -hmm. uh, if you break it down, you know, oh, this is, what, this is what this means is to make something cold. And there it is, you know. So those modern words that we put in there, I, I realized that the Locono people had been doing that since the 1900s. They started recreating words to fit their yeah. the modern evolving, time. Evolving, evolving. Exactly, yes. you know. Yes. Yes. Um, and then we also, what we did also is that we added, um, uh, the, the suffixes, you know, uh, to create like, you know, present participles, uh, mm -hmm. uh, I, um, you know, pluralizers, mm -hmm. some are traditional, some are not, mm -hmm. um, but all, but you don't have to use them if you don't want to, but the thing is to be able to say something like, like if I want to say ran, you know, uh, or rather if I want to say walk, kona, uh, walked, konaki, walking, mm -hmm. konani, konani, et cetera, et cetera. So that at least we have the option to be able to, to do that too, you know? Mm -hmm. And I also didn't want someone to look at it and say, well, this is just a copy of, 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 uh, of this language or that language. You right. Know? And so come, I, I picked different languages mm -hmm. so that it could be unique. Mm -hmm. um, and, what? Go ahead, go ahead. Yeah, yeah. so, um, and then finally, it, it's to, to, to work it and speak it until, until, it, it, it develops, you know, because for me, the development comes from usage, you know, from usage, yeah, yeah, yeah. from leaving the embodiment. And so mm -hmm. that's what my question was going to be. What do you want um, this dictionary to do? Um, what are you envisioning? Um, mm -hmm. And how? Yeah, t t tell me that one. And then um, I'll ask you one more question. Bueno. For me, if this is going to survive, mm -hmm. then it has to change, you know? Mm -hmm. um, and like I said, it it because when I see a, a people living in this nested identity nested mm -hmm. community, mm -hmm. um, there comes a time when they're like, oh, you know, but when you say this, then this doesn't work. Mm -hmm. you know? So we have to change it, you know? And mm -hmm. that's when it begins to become a standard thing. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I I never intended it to be like here is a Taino language or this is right. a Taino language. That's very unrealistic, you know. Hence, why you you call it you you title a dictionary the way you did. 
Right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So for me, it's a, it's about um, for us to be able to have prayer, mm -hmm. you know, a, a prayer songs mm -hmm. in in non settler languages. You know, mm -hmm. I mean, my, my philosophy is how could you decolonize by using mm -hmm. the colonizer's language, you mm -hmm. know? Yeah. And, and, right. and, and there's right. there's something about like now we we you know like I'm working on this on this on, the, on a song right now and, mm -hmm. and I'm not a songwriter, you know, mm -hmm. but I'm working on a song and and when I when I say it, I I understand what I'm saying in, in this other language. Mm -hmm. And it, it there's this freedom that I feel mm -hmm. that I'm not mm -hmm. bound by this other languages, you know. And it, and and that for me was was what yeah. this was was all about I guess you know yeah and and going back to your point that uh, you know the work um, I love the concept of nested identity if we can call it right uh -huh. and cultures um, but this idea that in order for this to become alive it has to be embodied mm -hmm. so it has to be embraced. Um, what are some ways for people to get to know more the work that you're doing? Um, what are some of the communities that, um, that you have created so people can have access to, to the beautiful work you're doing? Well, several things. So um, my group, Iguayagua, mm -hmm. we, we, are, we teach weekly classes. Um, and, uh, and all the classes that we've had so far, we record them all, of mm -hmm. course, via Zoom. And now we're going to start playing them every single day so that people have access to, to, the, to, the, to the lessons every single day, you know, like how to mm -hmm. pronounce the words, mm -hmm. et cetera, et cetera. Um, and um, we also have a Quizlet, you know, that teaches you, you know, how, 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 to, how to work it. Um, if you would allow me um, to share a screen, um, I can show you something real quick. Mm -hmm. The only thing is, if you're gonna share um, in the past when we have tried to do um, videos, then wow. when I try to post on Facebook, it blocks the the um, the podcast. Oh, really? Yeah. Okay. Oh. Um, if you're using a web, I don't know why it does that. Um, okay. So what? So what, what we, we have a, uh, one of the guys, uh, you know, again, like this work, it, mm -hmm. a lot of it to me, it feels so magical, you know, because mm -hmm. uh, one, one, yeah. one Taino brother um, uh, who lives up in Canada, he got in touch with me and said, um, hey, uh, George, uh, I, I want to get a, a dictionary um, and, uh, and then I got to talk to you about something. So I send him the dictionary. And then I noticed that he was picking up on it really quick. And I was mm -hmm. like, wow, this guy's amazing. You know, like mm -hmm. he's already speaking it better than me, mm -hmm. you know, but then he, he couldn't contain himself and he broke down. He's actually this computer whiz, you know, he works in, in the business. So he created an app. So now okay. we have an app that translates just like Google Translate. It translates mm -hmm. the, the, the work. So we've been able, as we fix the language, you know, mm -hmm. the book has um, some words like, like one word will have two or three different uh, words mm -hmm. for the same Meaning. thing. Yeah, yeah. And these are going to become like synonyms for the same mm -hmm. work, you know? Mm -hmm. So we're, mm -hmm. we're, we're this, as, as we use it, we're deciding what works better, you know? Mm -hmm. um, uh, some words are, are, are could, could come out misspelled because it's really hard to get it, you know? So, 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 so the book has a, a few mistakes, so about like 30, 30 something mistakes. So considering mm -hmm. it's 20 something thousand words, it's, it's, it was good. It's but, not bad, yes. But the, but the, but the app may, uh, 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 helps us create, uh, to fix the problems as, as we find them, you know? So one of the things about the language is, is truncating, trun truncating words, you know? Mm. For example, um, um, have, um, have, right? Uh, uh, is ewa, right? Mm -hmm. And uh, a is abba. Right. Mm -hmm. So when you write it, you have to combine the two because in the way Arawak works is like if the, the one um, and this is one of the few rules that we that we adopted from the other languages. We also made up our own rules to make it work. Mm -hmm. um, but let's say if, if, if one word ends in a, 
the mm -hmm. re power ends in A, and the preceding word begins with A, what you do is you drop one and mm -hmm. put it together, mm -hmm. you know? So, well, but that's what we did uh, when we when we say, um, uh, what is one word that we say? Tato. Tato, yeah, tato, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> same, same concept. Whenever you look at, if you look at, if you look at, uh, at the Arabic language, that's, so, that's how it works, you know? Right, uh, right. A lot of it anyway. Yeah. Um, so, so what I'm gonna do, because I don't want us to include a video here, um, oh, it's not a video. It's not a video. I'm just going to show you the page so you can see it. Okay, go go ahead then. Um, okay. But I was going to say that what I'll do is I will put at the bottom, I'm going to put all the links um, to get to you. But you are a co-host now, so you can share whatever. Uh, okay. Uh, let me see. Where am I? Okay, okay. so share. And uh, here. And there it is. Okay, mm -hmm. so for example, if I say um, have mm -hmm. ewa a mm -hmm. abba, so mm -hmm. have a mm -hmm. ewa abba. Ah, beautiful. Yeah, you see, so uh -huh. I say have a good a good. <laughs> now you know my secret. I don't know how to <laughs> day my friend wow mm -hmm. and uh etc cetera, etc cetera. so right now we're up to like 85 percent accuracy on mm -hmm. this app um um actually we're up to like 90 now mm -hmm. but it's always going to be it's never going to be 100 percent complete you know um but it's a it's a work in progress so um what 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 i it, the way the way I envisioned it was mm -hmm. um, uh, the way I see it is if we can continue working on this five years, you know, mm -hmm. when we have fluent speakers, mm -hmm. that's when I can say we've created a language. Right. You know? But it's it's a it's an evolutionary process, so it that's, takes that's time. The, yeah, exactly. I mean, you yeah. you've been working for decades on this, and yeah. Um, yeah. So, um, so this is one way that people can um, access if they go to, to this web, website. And yeah. then I'll put other ways to contact you. The website uh, right now, um, mm. it's only for, for members. Um, mm -hmm. we, we're trying to get all our members in first before we start letting in people from, from um, outside. Mm -hmm. um, I'll, I know, I know you, so I'll let you know. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So I, we have to end here, but I, I think we're going to have to continue this conversation at some, at some uh, point. There's a, there's a lot, it's very layered, there's a lot, but thank yes. you so much for giving me this opportunity to, to explain a little bit about this. And, uh, and I just want to say that um, so far it's going really good. You know, we, we mm -hmm. have a lot of people that are really dedicated to the language, you know, and, 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 um, I literally have people, I, we have a, a page on Facebook, mm -hmm. a language page on Facebook where you're not allowed to say anything and nothing but the language. Ah, so whatever so, we say is in the language. Right. You know? So it's a good way to practice. Yeah, so that way you, you keep always practicing. So I'll, I'll make all those available um, for people. So thank you so much for it. Thank you for having me. Thank <laughs> you. I'm glad that we finally got together. This yes. Week. So thank you for listening to What a Word is Worth. You can access today's interview at Anchor, YouTube, and other platforms. And if you are interested, hit the subscribe button in your podcast app. Of course. And also, um, let us know how we are doing with this program. So, um, Jorge, again, thank you, thank you, thank you. Okay, I come up.